Hey guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to the auto keyword in C++. So let's begin. The auto keyword, what is it? Well, it's a keyword that has been around since C, actually, and C++ in version C++11 repurposed the keyword. And what it's often used for now is to eliminate silly mistakes that you make. So let's say that um, you know you wanted to store a number like 3.5 in a variable. And you might just on autopilot without thinking, because we've all done that, create a variable to hold it. And you're just thinking, oh well, int x, right? Int i, int j, int 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 int, and you and you decide to use an int data type, right? So you say int x. And then later on in your code, you assign um, x 3.5, right? Well, you would lose that, um, that decimal place, right? Well, when you're initializing a variable, say int x equals 3.5, well, you're still going to lose that, that, that decimal place, right? The 0.5 is just going to get truncated because um, integers can't hold floating point numbers, right? Well, instead of declaring X as type int, what you can do is you can declare it as type auto. And so when you do that at compile time, the compiler is gonna take a look at the value being assigned to the variable when you're doing the initialization, right? This isn't just, this isn't for assignments, for initialization now. And it looks at the data type of what's being assigned to the variable at initialization time and determines what the appropriate data type is. So it's a way for you to no longer have to worry about so much, you know, what data type to use. The compiler will automatically figure it out for you. Okay, now this isn't a replacement for understanding different data types in C++. Okay, this is, uh, something that you can use once you have a solid understanding of data types to help you avoid one of those silly mistakes that we all make. And it can also help to a certain extent, you can use auto as parameters in functions as another way of making a sort of function template. Okay, but in this video, I'm just gonna show you the basics of how to use it to set up your variables and give you a couple of examples, okay? So let's go ahead and switch over to Visual Studio, okay? And I've already got a program set up and we'll go ahead and you know, show you what I mean, right? So I was saying, you know, you often make this silly little mistake, right? Especially if you're a new computer science student and you're just like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna create my variables and initialize them, right? And the problem here, is that it's not actually going to be 3.75 that gets stored in X, it's just going to be 3, as you can see from the output. You know why? Because X doesn't hold or, uh, floating point numbers, it only holds integers, right? So the auto keyword comes in by making it so that that error can't happen anymore, okay? So now, when I run this, you're going to see that I got the full 3.75. Now, why? Because the compiler took a look at the uh, 3.75 here and then said, oh, okay, so we need a double for this, right? This is type double. So then it goes, and when it goes through the compilation process, it goes and, and replaces the auto with double for you, right? It sets it up automatically and allocates the memory for you automatically so that way you don't make that careless mistake. And it's actually recommended that you you know, use auto whenever you can. But again, remember, it's not a replacement for understanding what data types are. This isn't a way to get away from the language being strongly typed because, you know, you still have to understand, you know, what's going on in memory. It's just a way to eliminate, you know, careless errors among other things, right? So, you know, you can say auto x equals 3.75. You could say auto i equals four. You could say auto c equals um, J, right? So all of these things are going to work. So in the case of line six here, X becomes 
a double, right? And i becomes an int, and c becomes a care, right? So, you know, you can double check this um, by using the size of operator, right? So, if we do a c out size of x, what's that going to show us, right? Well, that's going to show us 8 because a double is eight bytes long, right? So you can do a similar thing uh, for I and um, C, right? So I and uh, C, okay? So you can do that. And you can see we got eight bytes for X, we got four bytes for I because integers have four bytes, and we got one byte for C because cares have one byte. Okay, and you could also, you know, do something like this. You could, I don't know, make one called M, and uh, you know, make this into, um, you know, a different data type. You can make it into, um, like maybe a float, right? So you could say three point six three, and then put that F there, right? So then this is going to make M become a float, okay? And so then we'll do a C out of M. Okay, and then we should see uh, four bytes for M. All right, so there you go. Because remember, the default behavior for floating point literals is the compiler is going to set aside eight bytes for it, right? But if you only need four, well, then you can force it, okay, by using this uh, notation here. Now, another way that you can use auto <clears throat> let's say that you had an array okay so we'll create an array of integers and we'll call it just r right and we'll initialize it with um, three six or three six nine right and we could combine this idea of a or the auto keyword with like say a range based for loop. So you could do something like this where you could say, well, for auto I R, right? And so what's gonna happen is, is that I is gonna be whatever data type it needs to be for your loop, right? So with this range based for loop, again, another thing that was introduced in C++ 11, you know, I is gonna become integer because it's an array of integers, okay? And so then, we can uh, you know, put inside of here our, uh, oops, EMDL. You know, inside the body of that for loop, a um, say out statement that's just gonna print the contents of the array, right? So there's the three, the six, and the nine. Okay, so that's everything that I wanted to talk to you about in this video. Gave you a little introduction to the auto keyword. Very useful for cutting down on those silly mistakes that we all make from time to time. It's recommended in you know, modern C++ programming, and it's not a replacement for data types or understanding uh, different types of data, but it is useful. Right? And um, you know you can use it with integers, doubles, floats, doesn't matter. And even you could use it with objects like string or your own custom objects that you create, right? From your own custom data types from classes or structs or, or whatnot. So. Uh, there you go, introduced in C++11, and another tool for your toolbox, okay? Uh, the items are going to pop up here in a second or two. You're going to have some stuff you can click on. Be sure to check that out, and if you found the video useful, thumbs up would be great, a subscribe would be great, and if you thought the video sucked, well, there's that thumbs down for you there too, all right? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.